more basil pads. Welcome to the jungle. Oh, the mess. We've got fun and games. What are you doing? What are you doing? I don't know. I thought I'd film you in here, let everybody know. Where I hide out? Where our missing furnace guy was last seen. Oh my God. Got some beautiful basil. Oh my God. I love basil. I would say. Oh, it smells so amazing. So what are you going to do with all this basil? I'm making herb planters. One, I'm making herb planters for the farmer's market. Um, so I'm going to put those together. And I've been growing this basil for a while now. But see how they're getting a little tall? We have a few that are taken off. One thing, you, to keep your basil going lots, you have to pinch it, pinch it back. So what I'm doing is I'm going to take this and pinch back right where you see more leaf sets coming out. And you can do two things with these. And what two things can you do? You can eat them because they're ready to go and there's lots of basil on these. Look at the size of the leaves. Or you can actually root these and make more basil plants. So basil's super easy to grow. Oh, and it smells so good. I love it. And we might do, I wanna do pesto on pasta tonight. Oh, that's a that's a big yes. You're supposed to say yes. I can't wait. Anyway, no comment. Um, so yeah, that's all I'm doing. I'm I'm basically see how they're starting to get a little tall. I want I want these to really start leafing out and getting full and bushy. And so I still have a couple weeks before the market. So I'm gonna harvest some tops, and I'm gonna let these fill out, and I'm going to encourage <coughs> more branching. So how long can you keep basil for, um, like after you pinch it? Uh, you should use it pretty quickly. You, you can like um, put it in the fridge, but it really doesn't love, it wants to be used fresh. So how are you gonna harvest all, you're gonna just let these grow and then like harvest them before you make these um, planters? No, I'm actually using, like some of these, I'm just gonna sell as potted basil, but I'm going to include this in the herb planters and so we'll have a nice little array so i have little fabric pots i don't have one down here i wish i had one uh, but i'm gonna just do like a little a little montage. you have a fabric pot over there a little montage of like oregano thyme basil sage i have a whole bunch of different ones and look at this stupid thing swinging in the way celery yes so i'm i may even I may even do celery. We have lots of awesome celery. Look at this. So that'll grow some nice things. So I might just put together a nice little herb planter because why not? Herbs are fun to grow. They're easy. They're aromatics. You know, generally the deer and the little pesky rascals don't eat them. So if somebody wanted to grow herbs, could they just grow herbs in their garden in regular soil and everything? Yep. Um, now, when you pinch them, can you reroot itself or? Yeah. That's what I mean. You can take, you can root these. So if somebody wants as put, many as you have. You can you can, you know, I don't, I don't recommend rooting hormone. If you're going to eat, like this is basil, you're going to eat it. So you don't really want to do rooting hormone, but they'll root in water. So if you just left these in water, as a matter of fact, rosemary is also one of the herbs that you can do that with. So on 427, was that yesterday? Maybe the day before, I'm not even sure. Um, you strip the half, half of the leaves off of the cuttings and you have to take cuttings from fresh rosemary. So like the newer growth, you don't wanna take um, cuttings from the really woody stems because you know those are the older stems and they're less likely to root. But these are nice, young, fresh stems. And you just take these, put them in water and they will actually root and you'll start to see little white roots come out and that's a whole new plant. So we're gonna do some rosemary, some thyme, oregano, sage, basil, and then hopefully they all grow in nice and I can keep them alive so that we can sell them and make a little bit of, so little bit of money. So what would happen if somebody bought one of your herb pots and then never really pinched any of the herbs? Would it like just grow out of control? And it, then... it could. Um, it really depends if they're going to neglect it. They need to be fed a little bit. Um, or you could take them out of the planter and put them in your garden because oregano and thyme are perennial here. So they, those will continue to come back if you put them in the ground. Basil, if you don't pinch it back, will eventually flower. And after basil flowers, 
the flavor changes. It kind of gets like bitter. It's not the basil that you think of when you want to make pesto or something. It changes the whole dynamic of basil. So you really want to keep pinching this back because what happens is you pinch back where it wants to send up flowers and then it's like, oh, it's got to make a new way. You know, it's got to make more, um, more, what's, what am I trying to say? It's Leaves? Gotta make, yeah, it's got to make, it wants to make flowers because that's how it reproduces. It makes flowers and goes to seed and then it lives on. So if you pinch it back and it can't produce a flower from here, it's going to try to create more leaves to create more stalks of flowers. That's what I'm trying to say. Has one ever said ouch after you pinched it or no? <laughs> I, you know, I am a pretty rough pincher. <laughs> yes, I know. But, oh, it smells so, you know what? Look at all this basil though. So this is like a benefit to growing basil uh, in your own basement. And you can grow this year round if you have grow lights. Basil is really easy. It loves warm weather. This has been outside a little bit, but look at this. These are these are so cute, aren't they? I love basil and it smells good. I mean, these are great. Look at these pots. So I'll probably take the ones that really look the best potted um, and sell them individually. And then ones that I can kind of like pinch back and get to play nice with the other herbs, I'll do that. So what else do you have growing on this thing? Oh my God. Is I this the uh, all so herbs or this no? This is celery. Um, I have peppers, which by the way, did you know you can pinch pepper plants back? I learned this this year. Say that three I times. I don't know where I heard it, but I have put myself in a situation where I started peppers early because they take forever. And I've had years where they've taken forever to sprout. But the thing is, they got so big and they started to flower. So I was doing some research and someone said, just pinch off the top where the flower is. And guess what happens? The same thing that basil does, peppers do. They start to put out these little side shoots and then you get actually more leaves and more production off the stems because now you have a multi-stemmed plant instead of a one pepper plant so like for this one look at this see all of the little side shoots are growing so this really wants to be in the ground but it's so not warm enough yet so i've had them outside a little bit which really makes them grow and we had like 80 degree days so they really loved it I'll tell you what did not love the 80 degree days, eggplant. This is what happens when you don't harden off your vegetables and you just bring them outside and you leave them in the sun. See that? That kind of, they get sunburned just like humans. So if they always say harden your plants off. If you don't know what that means, look it up and research it. This is what happens. It bleaches the leaves out and it gets sunburn. It's terrible. And then the leaves can't use or absorb sun or light because they're just fried. Um, but anyway, you're supposed to slowly acclimate the plants to outdoor sunlight exposure and to the temperatures and to the wind to strengthen them up. I did not do that and it got really hot and I wasn't home and I came home and look, poor things, that's what happens. I'm gonna take those off anyway. So anyway, they will be fine. They're actually, they're actually quite healthy and you can see the new stuff is growing on the top. The new leaves are coming out. Uh, but yeah, so my peppers, I grew, I started them really early, so they got really tall. I learned I could pinch them back and they'll bush out just like basil does. And then now I'm waiting for temperatures to get warm enough to plant them outside. So if you pinch them back, will it be a puny pepper or will it just be a regular pepper? Like, will it be smaller That's like than a normal pepper? Are you going to be Peter Piper if you plant this pepper? Could be. Come on, you come at come at me. I got some. I got some. Words that was pretty seat. good, though. I liked all those peas. I was yeah. going to try to do it, but you know, I stutter. <laughs> you do. It would have been funny to see you attempt it. Yeah. Well, Want to see something else I'm doing? Sure. Okay. So I'm growing microgreens, and I didn't have enough shelf space, so this looks kind of like you know a little not what you're supposed to do, but. I have really heavy weights. I'm growing broccoli. <gasps> wow! This is so cool! Okay, so I'm learning a lot about growing microgreens. This is broccoli. Big, I think it's called Big Chinese Green Broccoli Shoots. Um, and what you're supposed to do is 
just so you're not supposed to cover them with soil. You're supposed to put a dark tray on top of them. And then that way, when they grow, they don't have dirt. You know, if you cover them with dirt normally, they would grow up and they'd have dirt on the leaves. And you don't want that to happen because you're going to eat them as little baby sprouts. So you're supposed to cover them with another tray, put heavy weight on them so they're forced to root down and they stay moist. And they're supposed to look like this after two to four days. You take the lid off and then you put them under lights and they green up and they grow and they're like super nutritious. This looks like I nailed it. This looks like I've been doing it for years. So no, broccoli to... grows better when it's in black? It has a blackout period. Funny you mentioned that. Yes. So a lot of microgreens need a blackout period. And the blackout period forces them to like grow long and kind of leggy and try to find the sun. And it also keeps the moisture in so that they can sprout without that extra layer of dirt on top. So now all we do, I have to exchange something for something. These are red Brussels sprouts. I'm excited about those too. Well, if I don't pay the electric bill, these are all gonna have a blackout I know, period my, my pretty soon. My price might have to be super high. Yeah. The price of, um, electricity lately so much so anyway, for going green right i know so this right here is going to go under lights and then they're just going to start literally in like two days these are going to be just so beautiful and you bottom water so this tray has holes in the bottom and you can actually see some of the roots coming down already and you actually put water in the bottom tray that has no holes and it's just about a half inch above this bottom tray so they don't get waterlogged but you bottom water so you don't wet the leaves because a lot of because you're growing them so closely a lot of times you can get fungal diseases and you know problems but it's like those are specific trays for microgreens so why is it so crowded these are just little seedlings so when you grow microgreens man these need water um so when you grow microgreens you seed them really closely. Let's see if I have any. Do I have any? No, probably not. Um, I was gonna show you the seeds. So they're just like regular seeds you would buy. Like you can get radish, broccoli, peas, um, all sorts of things. And you seed really closely because that's what makes them grow really tall. They're kind of struggling and fighting for light. So you get the long stems so you can actually snip them and those little leaves can leaf out. So you want them to be close because that's what makes them kind of grow and they're only growing for a short time. So you can allow them to be competitive while they're growing so closely because you're going to snip them in like a week. So they're not going to, these aren't going to grow full size plants. These are going to eat as actual little sprouts or microgreens. So they'll never grow up to be big broccolis? No. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> so it's We're gonna like, take their heads off and eat it's them. It's like broccoli veal. It's it's barbaric. Actually, it's barbaric. Right? So if you planted it though, would it turn into broccoli? There are, they say that microgreen seed is like specific for microgreens. I don't know exactly what that means if, but I'm sure if you took one of these and you planted it and properly, that you would get Chinese broccoli. I mean, it is, it's seed for that. Or the, the big leaf broccoli. So, yeah. So I'm excited about this. I'm, I'm growing a bunch of stuff. And um, this is just one of your yeah, light like, rooms. This is Celosia that's really dried out. I am so bad. It's warm in here. So you see how tiny the little cells are? They really dry out a lot. But these look good. I just need weather now. The weather to cooperate. This guy's like, I am thirsty. Poor I know. Guy. Little do they know, we have lines of milk jugs out here, and a dirty sock. But we have lines of milk jugs to water. Yeah, we don't have the the greatest setup down here. But this is I just put the water in the tray, and then they soak up. If if I was really nice, I'd pot each one of these up. But there's 128 celosia plants in a 20, 10 by 20 tray. And if I had the room, I would pot them up so they're nice and big, but they're going to stress a little bit in here until I can plant them. So that's, I'm going to probably put a little too much water in there, but they need a good drink. What else do I have? I know. What do you have? I have seedlings, like little, um, these are dahlia cuttings, more celery, snail vine. That's a first for me. Um, ginger. 
Did you ever see ginger? This is how ginger grows. This is a sprout from ginger. So I'll also be selling these at the market um, and planting some. I had really good success with ginger. It's a heavy feeder. It likes tropical, you know, warm weather. So I potted some up um, and then some of this is just gonna go straight into the garden and some of it's gonna be potted up for purchase. So I could also do that. I have some calendula, I have some cilantro. I have chrysan oh, heirloom chrysanthemums for the cutting garden. I have no space available for any more dahlias. I have to take cuttings. Look, they're all starting to get like into, <laughs> this is, this is a, one I was supposed to take a cutting of last week and I've just left it. Look at the, look at, now it's like a full size plant, but I have multiple cuttings on this and it's like, I could have five more cabana banana dahlias, but guess what? That would be bananas because I have no room to put it under lights and yeah, it's kind of just look, it's like, okay, I'm out of, I'm done with the four inch pot. So I'm running out of time and, and room and space, but it's exciting. This is, oh look, this ginger is good. See, she's a little, she's a little stressed out because I haven't watered them. It's so hot in here. You open that window so they can. Does ginger flower or no? I don't believe so. So those are like those big, ugly, they looked like toes that were on the kitchen table. You want to see? What? You want to see them? This is, this is ginger. These are, here's four crates of ginger. And what happens is, I'm going to show you. This is, um, see this little guy? Look, there's actually sprouts coming. Yeah. So what you, what you have are pieces of ginger. This is ginger, like the root you would buy at a grocery store. And what happens is you cut them, hopefully you need like two to three eyes per piece and it'll start sending up a shoot. And what happens is this thickens up and that's where the new ginger grows and it continues to grow. You can actually dig this up in the fall, um, use some of it, break off a piece and put the rest of the plant in a pot and overwinter it like a house plant. Did you know that? No. Yes, you can. So I have a whole bunch, and what I do is I pre-sprout them in here because they don't need light until they sprout. Kind of looks like me taking my sock off after helping you after a long day in the dirt. No, it would never look that bad. So these are like, so I have them labeled by size. Like, I'll show you a bigger piece. Oh, so this has two to four eyes on the ginger. And then this says premium. This is like four to, these are the big boys. It looks awful dry. They don't like to be wet, much like dahlias. Where's a big boy? Ah, see this? So we got one, two, three, four, five eyes. Nice and firm. You don't, they don't like water um, until their leaves sprout and they can absorb it. Kind of like dahlias. They really want to be super dry until they start their leaf growth. Because if you don't, they'll just rot, they'll mush. So how many eyes did that have when you planted it? None. So those... What happens is you get the ginger in big hands, they call them, and then you dice them up and you let the diced part scab over and dry out. And then you put these all in soil and there's heat mats underneath these. So it's keeping them really warm because they want like 80 degrees. So, and then what you'll see is you'll start to see all the eyes that come out just like that. And then you, then you have roots. See the roots starting? The little tiny roots on the eyes and then you're going to grow ginger so the more eyes you have on the plant the more ginger and the more hands you'll have and the more success in production but i'm gonna do like little one and two eye pieces so that people can try it out like and plus why not i have trays of them so i want you know it's part part of the fun of gardening and like showing people hey you can grow ginger here it's new york but you can do it and you can try it and they don't have to like spend a ton of money to try it when they don't when they're not really experienced they can get a little sample try it out and when they're hooked they can grow in their own garden so you have to dig that up though after the yeah, end they, of the season i actually dug mine up after it got cold um and it was great it was still firm and young ginger tastes amazing like it's really different than your supermarket ginger so are all these ones you've dug up from last year nope. or? these no i used all that as a matter of fact the ginger that i grew last year i put um it, it, you actually don't even have to peel it because the skin is super like, it's super delicate. You don't have that rough 
um, that rough brown coating and skin on it. So you can actually cut it up, clean it up, and I freeze it in ball jars in the freezer and you can grate ginger. You can't thaw it out and use it because it mushes after it freezes, but you can grate it and it still tastes like fresh ginger. So that's the one way to store ginger if you're not gonna overwinter it. You can just store it in full sections and pop it in a glass jar, freeze it, take it out and grate it frozen. It's so easy, it's amazing, flavor's still there. You have ball jars in the freezer? Yeah. Oof. What? They're meant for that. All right. <laughs> Did you learn something? Yeah, I guess. Um, don't hurt my face. I know, I'm oh, trying to back did. out of here. Oh, I just pinched a pepper. Well, guess what? what? This will be my rooting. These will be the rooted cuttings right here. Oh, That's I, all right. We, we can have one sacrificial. I guess I peppered so. your pepper with yeah, my... Yeah, you what? popped something. Um, but yeah, so that's it. So this is just sort of like my little... It puts around down here. But it, obviously it's been a while because everything is thirsty and they have their tongues out. This is more like your starter seed room, right? Because what do this you call is, the other well, light the room? Well, the other, like the garage, it's colder there. So all my cold season annuals and my lettuces, that's all down there because it can handle the colder weather. This wants like eggplant, peppers, celery, um, broccoli, tomatoes, not broccoli, tomatoes, um, basil. It wants warm temperatures. So they kind of... They're in here, but boy, they, they could use an upgrade. They're really looking for more room, but you know what? They're all snuggling up. Pretty soon they'll be out doing their thing. Why does it feel like a baboon's going to reach out from your plants and yank you in <laughs> there? You know, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. But yeah, so that's what I got going on. Well, that's great. Pretty cool. I'm glad we actually covered this because I think people thought I was exaggerating when I said we had a jungle Actually, this in our as, furnace room. this isn't as bad as it could be. I know. You did you take quite see, a few plants out. You see the garage. That you can't really even move in. And I have like, I have more things down there. Oh, my God. And by the toy room, I started like 30 dahlias in pots. And I have like another 75. And I still have orders coming in. And so I... I I'm a little ahead of myself this year, but we'll see what happens. I find that hard to believe that you oh, would actually get ahead of yourself. I know. You've told me. Don't get, <laughs> a, don't get ahead of yourself. No, nope, I got it. Well, the problem is, that, you know, I started getting all my Dahlia tubers in, and I'm like, oh, I'll just pot them up, and I'll take cuttings, and now I have like 20, like 120-some cuttings, and they all made it. So I'm like, oh, okay, I don't need to, I don't need like 50 of one variety or something. So... I don't know. I might pot those up too and, and sell them. When they're in bloom, it'll be hard to resist them. So hopefully, you know, I'm learning a lot this year and I'm kind of just figuring it all out. So we'll see what happens. Maybe you could put a pack of pickled peppers in a package. Wow. I almost think you deserve like, I don't know, a gold star for that. Thank you. That was impressive. Not bad. Not bad at all. See, I didn't get ahead of myself and neither did my tongue. <laughs> Oh, that was a tongue yeah. twister. It was a tongue twister. Um, yeah, so. That's All right, cool. honey. Well, Aren't maybe at some point we'll go down and we'll see your other light room. Yeah, well. Not today. Uh, you know what? I, I, need to, I need to get these guys watered for things. But look at that. Is that not a... And so listen, this is a four, a four inch pot or four and a half inch pot. And I have five, six, seven basil plants in here that's probably too many five would have done it but if i pinch them back and they bush out i mean you can't have too much basil but i'll have to feed these really well until i sell them because they're gonna get hungry can you freeze basil no oh. you can't although you can't freeze it like this but you can put um like if you chop it up or you mince it you know like you put it like pesto and you put olive oil in it or you make pesto put it in ice cube trays and you can freeze the cubes and then you put them all in a baggie and you have like a fresh pop of basil and olive oil for like sauces and stuff through the winter. It works great. If you use olive oil and you like um, blend that up in a blender or a puree it is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you can actually, it tastes amazing. It, it preserves the flavor and you, but you have to do it in little cubes with olive oil. That's the difference. 
So if you just froze the leaves, they turn black, and when you thawed them out, they'd be mushy. You you wouldn't want to do that. So most people wouldn't need more than one pot full of basil, basically. Um, it depends. If you're making pesto, you would need you need a lot. Like I I don't think you can ever grow too much basil. But that's just me. Like I would just grow rows and rows of this because look how much I'm pinching off and still need like this right here. You know, usually you need a few cups of basil, but add olive oil to this and put it on pasta. That's enough for, that's enough for a meal for you and I. I guess I know what I'm getting for dinner. Oh my tonight. God, you are so lucky. You yeah. So, oh, so lucky. Mm. How, who else is having fresh basil from their basement? Nobody. <laughs> Fresh basement basil. There you go. Yeah, wow. Here's my tongue twister. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing. It's beautiful. It's probably better basil than basically most. It is. And it's in nutritious soil. And it's like, it's ready. It's it's going. And I have a couple weeks for this all to sort of fluff out and for the market. So, I'm going to take advantage. Well, hopefully the furnace guy heard you. Hey, buddy, you can eat the basil. <laughs> You can survive in here until you find your way out. Yeah, right. Hopefully he doesn't. Then he won't give us a bill for the service on the furnace. Uh, I know. We are overdue. Yes. All right, honey. Did you learn something? Yes, I always learn something when I talk to you. And I don't bust on you all video. No. I'm sure your voice is very soothing and calm this time. Oh, come on, man. We're all well, Americans. Come on, you're not going to ask me how much did these birds of plants cost you, honey? Well, everybody thinks, you know, that I'm like this tightwad when I'm actually Daddy Warbucks. You are. He is. He's, he is definitely... Uh... And if I was as cheap as people think I am, I wouldn't... <laughs> Although you do have to reel me in because, you know, I do get ahead of myself. Yes, I, I you know, it's... Uh... You've got the brains, and I've got the... Uh, the books. So, well, then, then we'll get... Oh, she's a gold digger. No, I worked my butt off. Trust me. We, we It's a joint venture. No, I like to joke around with you about money. If I actually was really concerned about your spending... Oh, we'd be divorced. I highly doubt we'd be on <laughs> Facebook joking we'd, around about we'd it. We'd be divorced. Yes. If it, ma if it really mattered. There's still time, but... <laughs> If I if I don't reel in my my uh, cup flower budget here, I may have a divorce on my hands. Oh, I would never divorce you. You, that's because you're smart. I would just jump off a bridge. It'd be a lot easier. Well, that's terrible. I'm kidding. Um, no, I I, I definitely think that um you you're going in the right direction with everything it's just there's so many different directions to go I, so. i'm going in the right direction but my bank account is not <laughs> yeah <laughs> that definitely i tell well, you what it is quite an investment i must say like you know i i also like i love to share things and i love to like you know give things away but you know it is quite expensive to um start this all up i will say well, and you're also doing three things at once. You're trying to uh, fund your clients' garden jobs, and you got it's just the upfront cost just to buy plants yeah. and lights and pots and soil. People don't think about that. They think they're going to go outside, put a seed in the ground, and everything's going to be happy go lucky. But guess what? Yeah, it's, it's a. Uh... That's what I used to do. Throw seeds in the ground? Yeah, and nothing ever happened. No. No. Well, a lot of people, you know what? They get all excited because it's springtime and they're going to do all this stuff and they got big plans and they plant stuff. They get started, but then, like, you have to tend it and you got to feed your plants. And you, if you're not starting with decent um, soil, you have to make sure that you're keeping an eye on what's happening because, you know, plants do have needs. So it's a lot of time and investment, but I, like... Even this stuff, like, I feel like even when people buy, like, the potted basil, they're like my babies. I mean, I've come down here every day. I'm like the crazy plant lady talking to my, you know, I'm like, oh, take care of them. I hope it's, like, very productive. And Well, in reality, people see your gardens and they're like, I want to be like Shelly. But they don't realize that there is a lot more involved 
especially money wise. Yeah. You use the top of the line fertilizers. I use I use amazing seed starting mix and obviously I mean it works. Look at this stuff. You know, if I were to use really cheap soil, wouldn't happen. I mean, what would happen is then I'd have to feed it and I'd have to really cater to them and um this soil feeds them to the point where they get big enough for um transplant or for for other people taking them home for you so trust me her plants get fed better than we do <laughs> honestly you're yeah probably right. you're everything probably in right. the cupboard is generic <laughs> thought i was colorblind all the labels were black well, and white tonight you're getting fresh pesto pasta although i don't know what are we gonna have with it i'm not sure meat sometimes we're gonna have that meat we're gonna have uh maybe some I don't know, maybe some shrimp? Maybe, maybe some... we'll have food. That package that just says food on it. <laughs> Dinner. Real processed meat. Yes. Yeah. Spam. Chicken. What about chicken with um maybe some diced up tomatoes? Do we have tomatoes upstairs? Probably not. And if they we do, they're probably crappy tasting. Um but yeah. Yeah, I'll preheat the stove for the frozen pizza and basil. Peppers don't smell We're having anything. Italian tonight. We are. You know what? You're gonna love that. That I love that. Little fresh garlic and the um the olive oil and pine nuts. We don't have pine nuts, but almonds work um just as good. So and then maybe in a couple days we'll have some broccoli sprouts. It's a myth because everybody thinks gardeners eat healthy, but because they're so darn busy, they don't have time to eat healthy. <laughs> you know what? That is kind of true. That's kind of true. It is. Kind of true. So, All right. I'll get the Tony's pizza <laughs> well, we don't in the that. oven. We don't eat that bad. Wow. Yeah, although you would say that that's a great meal. There's nothing wrong with Tony's pizza. You just have to put cheese on it. You just can't eat it every day or you'll die. Well, we're having greens. Yes. We're eating healthy tonight. I'm so excited about rosemary, by the way. Um, yeah. All right. I'll let you get to work. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And it was nice seeing you in the furnace room. <laughs> yes. And I hope you learned something. Yes. All right. Thank you. You're